Hello, this is Matt Leonard for The Foundry and in this video we're going to be looking at the new features of UV mapping and UV creation inside of the model builder. So if you're unfamiliar with UVs, UVs are simply 2D coordinates that tell the 3D application how to apply a texture to a model. And the reason why it's UV and not X, Y or maybe Z is because X, Y and Z were already taken that obviously denote the axis of an object in 3D space. The U represents the horizontal axis in the 2D texture and the V coordinate the vertical axis. So that's how we got our U and V simple 2D coordinates, as I said, to tell the 3D model or 3D application how to apply the texture onto the geometry. And we now have the ability to edit and control adding UV data to our models inside of the model builder. So let's get into things. Here you can see we have a 3D scene of a surf shack. And what we want to do is we want to add on one of these pillars a sign that basically says for sale. We've had enough of the surf shack and we're finally selling it. So let's put a board up to say that the surf shack is now on the market for anyone that would like to buy it. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to come in to the model builder and we're going to start by building a basic 3D object. Now I've already gone about putting some of this together to save a bit of time. So let's jump down to that section first of all. So speaking of jump, I'm going to press J to jump to our bookmarks and I'm going to choose our for sale sign here at the top. And you can see I've already set it up here, but we're going to look at some of the elements, specifically obviously the UV sections of this creation. So first off, what I did was I came across the 3D geometry and grabbed the model builder. And this has a texture input which I can put into the model builder, the texture that's going to appear in the back of the UV unwrap tool. So for this instance, I'm just going to come into our image tools here and I'm going to grab a checkerboard. And I'm going to apply that into the texture node here. If I now view that, you can see here we are in 3D space and we're just going to come over to our menu here for shapes and I'm going to choose a cube. So I'm just going to click and drag out a basic cube. Now if anyone hasn't used this tool, it's well worth getting into. It's very straightforward to use. First off, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say mode and there's a line edit and UV. UV obviously being the new feature that we have here in Nucate. I'm going to come to edit. And I'm just going to now right click and say that I want to work with a face selection. So I'm going to choose this face and I can move it back. I could also if I wanted do something like right click and bevel and I get a nice bevel here and I could even come in and I could increase the roundness by a number here. Maybe three would be quite nice or two. I could then click again with the left mouse button, right click and maybe this time extrude and I could extrude this out again making kind of our final sign. And then if I wanted to make it more into a kind of a portrait shape, I could right click and maybe go to vertexes, select these vertexes and then just move them down. You can see there could be the beginnings of our sign. Now, with regards to UVs, the UVs with this could be all over the place until we have decided how we want to lay them out. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to right click on here and for the time being, I'm just going to come back to the object mode and let's just zoom in a little bit closer just so we can see what we've got going on here. Well, I'm going to basically determine how the UVs are going to be laid out and I need to do that by setting some seams. Now the way I set some seams is I right click and what I'm looking to do is change my mode to UVs. This then brings up our kind of UV viewer or editor here and at the moment you can see that we've really not got much going on in here. What we want to do is set the seams on our 3D model and then unwrap and we'll see the result here in our UV viewer. So again I'm going to just move this over here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to come to edge selection and you could obviously do this with uh, edge loop selection or other options. But I'm going to use edge selection and I'm going to choose this top edge, shift select this edge and then come around and select this edge as well again by holding down shift. From there I'm going to work my way round to the back and then 
back over to uh, the top. So again, shift select here, here, and let's just keep on moving down here. And you have to be careful that you don't uh, pick too many edges, the ones you don't want. So shift select here again and uh, zoom on in. Shift select, shift select up the side at the back over the top so round about here if we can just zoom in this one and this one and then round again just doing the same this time here and the final ones if we just bring this round shift select shift select 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 and select and this final one here so having done that making sure we've got that one selected having done this we can now right click and we can come to mark as seams and this is what we're doing we're basically determining where these seams are so that we can cut this and as we cut it that will enable the 3d object to then be unwrapped into a 2d space which is what we want to do once i've done this i could also unmark certain seams if i wanted to or clear all of them but i'm just going to go with marking them for the time being and you'll notice they now go purple from here i can right click and i can say unwrap and what you now see is that we have actually unwrapped this model. So if I now hit the spacebar and I can enlarge this and you can see that we now have a huge amount of control in here. Firstly, we can actually come in and any of these CVs that we have in UV space, I can actually edit. So I could click and drag with my left mouse button over these CVs and I can physically begin to move them around so I can line them up with whatever I need. I could also do the same for this. I could left mouse drag and then I can edit these and move them around however I would like. And this will now update how the UVs are letting the texture be assigned directly onto our geometry. So let me just undo that. Let me scoop back here in our view. And I'm going to change this to textured. Now let's just scoot this down a little bit so that we have a little bit more room tap the space bar again so we come back to seeing everything full screen and if we now just move across select our cube you can now see here is our texture information applied if i just move around to the front again select the object right click and let's again just grab say uh, some vertexes and we're going to choose maybe these ones up here again. Make sure this is selected over here. And then as I move this, you can now see as we begin to move this around that this is now updating, but we're not seeing anything because it's at the back. So let's grab these ones. And as we move those, you can now see those UVs being adjusted as we move it in our UV editor down here so it's very straightforward you can really get a great result so again if I come over here and move these you can see we're scaling our UVs as we move about now this area here that we now see where the smearing is taking place that's literally because we've now dragged our CVs completely off of the UV editor so we just now got no information so it's just copying those pixels as we see in other situations inside of Nuke Okay, so that is the unwrapping and the editing directly in the UV editor. You can see up here that we have the ability to both drag and zoom in here. That's all done with a combination of either control or command. We click and drag and you can move around. If I then add the alt key to that, so control command plus alt, I can then zoom in and out and get really fine control, really see what I'm doing and come in and make adjustments to just individual uh, points enabling me to fine tune my CVs and my UV information as it applies to my model. 
Now, with regards to actually working with this UV data, what often happens is you may take a snapshot of your UV layout and then you may paint over that. That would be a normal way to work with UV data. So we can now do that because we have a handy new button down here, Capture This View. So as an example, I can again just go back to full screen mode, just bring this over here and again using Command or Control plus Alt, I can drag this back and move it up so I want to see my whole UV outline here with everything uh, here I can now come into my capture this view I could save this as say UV2 and I'm just saving this directly into a custom write path I'm going to delete any temporary files that may be there though there aren't as I've just renamed this I only want one view and I don't want to flip book it so if I now say OK, it now writes that out and you can see in Frame Cycler we have that image loaded in here. So what you could then do is paint over these layouts to actually put the information you need that you know will then be remapped correctly back onto your 3D model. Now I've already done that as an example and as we talked about at the beginning this is all about putting a sign up on our house. So let's just get rid of this and again spacebar to come back to full screen. I'm just going to delete these and I'm going to move across to this example here. So this is my UV layout, the one I captured earlier, just to save a bit of time. It's a JPEG as we know and therefore JPEG has no alpha. So I've quickly shuffled white into the alpha, you can see that here. We then have cropped this image down and if I view that you can see our crop is 759 to 760, so actually probably want this to be just a little bit wider so we can just adjust this so we end up with 760 by 760 make a final adjustment there I've then reformatted it down to 540 by 540 seemed like a nice size to work with and now I know that it's this area that I want to put my sign in. The rest of it I'm just going to have white. So I'm going to have a white sign with the front panel with the for sale information written on it. So in order to make the texture itself what I've done is I've just made a large white area here. I'm just going to close this down. So we have this white background here. I also have a smaller one here that represents the exact size that our UV information for that front panel was. So this size 325 by 245 is the same size as this area here. Okay, so I just measured that and it's the same size and that's what I made this constant. So again, if we just view that again, get rid of that. I've then used a roto just to make these uh, simple shapes. And then I've used the new Nuke 8 text tool to add in for sale. And this is a very flexible and powerful new text system that we have inside of Nuke. So there's our sign. What I found was I actually needed to flip it. So I've done that. I've flipped it and transformed it into place. And if we now view this on top of this, you can see what we end up with is this image and this now fits perfectly in here okay so it's this area if we just zoom in there it's that area there that now matches up with this okay so you can see if we put our viewer on and in here let's just come across to wipe you can see that that is now matching up pretty perfectly it's right in the right place which is what you normally want when doing any form of this UV mapping. So that's now just being uh, merged together here. I'm applying a Fong material to it and then I'm taking my original model that if we just remind ourselves looks like this. So very similar to what we built earlier. If we then again just come into edge area select some edges there is our UVs and I'm now applying the texture directly onto the geometry knowing that the UVs are now going to mean that the texture map is being applied perfectly into the geometry. So again just in order to see the texture I can just take my texture input to my merge here and that's now showing me in the view 
and if I wanted to I could select my CVs again and you can see how that now is adjusted based on those UVs that I've made. So let me just undo that. Again right click on the sign and go to unwrap again and you'll notice that we now have some buttons up here. UV window, this literally just switches this on and off here. Threshold, iterations and separation. If we start with separation, what that basically does is it just adjusts the separation between our UV uh, kind of blocks here or our patches of UV information here. It moves them away from each other or closer. Sometimes if they're really close, you end up having some smearing on the edges where one texture may merge into the other and you might just want to spread them apart. That's one thing that you can do with your separation and can be very useful. Next to that you have threshold and iterations and these very much work together. First off you have iterations and this is the number of times the unwrapper basically applies its rules about how to move the UV coordinates towards the good locations that you've set. And this gives you a speed versus quality trade-off. The more iterations the better result but the slower it takes to do the unwrap. Then you have threshold. And this is the amount of change between the iterations. If it's below a threshold, the unwrapper stops. This is really another way to trade off quality for speed. You generally use this if you want a higher quality result. And if you've increased the iterations, but the unwrapping has stopped before it reaches the maximum you want, you can lower the threshold to make it keep running. So that's iterations, threshold, and then the separation. So these are really the main tools that we have in order to do this unwrapping. As I said, gives you a huge amount of flexibility and is a welcome addition to the model builder inside of Nuke 8. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, this has been Matt Leonard on behalf of the Foundry.